I am happy to see this collapse. I'm happy to see a downturn, damn it. We should have had a bigger one in 2008, 9, and 10 and got rid of most of this bad debt. Now we have more bad debt than ever. We, we're going to get rid of it in the next few years. It's going to be painful. If we see another wave down, which would be the logical thing, forget everything we're saying. I'm just looking as a stock chartist. We had this first crash, a tepid bounce, and we have another one of the same magnitude. We're going to see uh, 73.50, you know, on the NASDAQ down more than 50% by late this year, early next year. And then people are going to know something is really wrong. So that's the problem now. It did crash. And the bigger problem is government said, well, we're not going to let it crash. And I'm like, who the hell are you? Who, who are you to think a bunch of politicians that never did anything for a living, most of you, and say, oh, we're just not going to let the economy do what the economy will do to correct an imbalance of overinvestment in bubbles and financial assets and bring them down to normal so we can grow again. All I do is research what happens in history and, <laughs> and what causes things and what doesn't. And that's the truth. So and you do not get a bubble like this. There has been no bubble every time, any time in all of history that has not burst badly and rapidly I, when it does. And it's already started. And uh, people are still in denial, included stupid Kramer. <laughs> if yes. you're in a boom and you're invested in the boom i mean everyday people didn't used to have so much money in stocks it was more in real estate and real estate does not go down like stocks does real estate is more stable even when it goes down and they everybody now has to root for this thing to keep going and so they'll listen to the people that say oh no don't worry about this don't worry about debt levels don't worry about demographics declining which they're declining at the speed of light in all developed countries in the world uh somehow the government will bring us out of this uh, the millennials bring us up through natural causes instead of printing money from 2024. And I, I'm very precise about this. I said from the beginning, the baby boom thing was going to peak in late 2007. I said that in the 80s. That's how <laughs> predictable people earning and spending money as they age are in generational surges. And the baby boom was a big surge. So, of course, a great boom. So We've been down ever since then. The millennials do not bring the upward natural momentum until 2024, and they will peak by 2037, much shorter boom than the baby boomers. It's Gen X is the declining birth rates from 1961 into 73 to 75 that, would, that caused the slowdown from 2008 still into 2022-23 before the millennials born after them take it up. And even the millennials, here's the important point, and nobody gets this, okay? Even the millennials with their spending power as a smaller generation, less long in birth, only take us back to where the baby boomers took us. We only get back to even adjusted for rising productivity. We will never see a boom like 1983 to 2007 again in the US and most of the developed world will never and Europe's okay. already behind us. They're causing the slowdown, but they kind of benefit because when asset prices go down eventually, which they aren't yet, the government won't let, when they do finally crash, they're going to be able to invest at more reasonable prices again and, and be able to invest for retirement. I tell you, anybody right now in the markets, whether it be bond markets at the lowest interest rates ever long term or stock markets, the highest valuation, if you invest today, even with no predictions of up and down economy, you're likely to make you know, a, a couple percent a year for the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to retire profitably until the markets come down to reality and you can invest at fair asset prices again. The millennials are causing, with less spending than the baby boomers who already peaked at age 46 to 47 before them, they're causing a slowdown. And instead of governments helping to restructure debt. We've got tons of bad debt now from the great boom from 83 to 2007 that needs to be restructured. They're encouraging people to keep that bad debt in place and not to reinvest in new industries and stuff. They're doing all the wrong things because they don't want to have a recession. You know what recession is to me? Sleep. Try not sleeping for three days and, and not become a crazy person. It's already proven. Three to five days, no sleep, you'll become a crazy person. We have to grow and, 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 and expand all the innovation of the past, and we have to slow again 
and restructure and cut out losing companies and losing things and reinvest in the future. And governments are interrupting the free market capitalist system that has made us the richest and the greatest advance since the late 1700s in all of history because they don't want to have a damn recession. All of this stimulus on top of the greatest demographic boom in history, but which did start to fail. So all this stimulus, stimulus throws money into the economy. What do, what do governments do with this? Stim- they buy financial assets. They start with bonds, but the more money goes in bonds, it will trickle into higher valuation stocks and real estate because that's where the returns are. So what we have now, and I got a number on this, it's close to $600 trillion in financial assets globally. Okay, 600 trillion, that's about seven times global GDP uh, at 95 trillion. And normally financial assets are a premium two, maybe three times. So the biggest problem in the world is all financial assets, even bonds. And when you have a crash like this, when these financial assets start to crumble, the, the money has to go somewhere. It goes into the safest areas. So it is the, the, the income producing real estate, multifamily mostly. And it is the treasury bonds, the highest quality government bonds. If the U.S. government can print enough money to keep a dumb bubble going, they'll certainly print money to pay their <laughs> bonds off, their treasury bonds. OK, you don't have to worry about a default on 30 or 10 year treasury bonds. 